Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. I'm Jerry. Max and David are here, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get in our DeLorean now. All right, uh, we're gonna get in our hot tub. Go back, go back in time, because we recently had a transfer window, and I'm sure like 10 years from now, some of these transfer rumors are gonna seem ridiculous. Okay, but we're gonna go back to, uh, in the past, as far as 2004, and talk about some of the transfer rumors, you know, me is, is kind of a fairly fresh Everton supporter. A lot of these I was kind of amazed by, so maybe you guys will be as well. So, mm. 2004, I was reading a bunch of stories about how Rooney was having uh, in-training bust-ups with, uh, with Moyes, saying something about, you got me for free, and, uh, but you put a 30 million <laughs> price tag on my head. You know, it's, it's crazy. And it seemed like it was all done and dusted. He was going to United. But apparently, Newcastle rumor, were rumored to have made a 20 million pound bid for him. And apparently, Newcastle were in for Rooney. Yeah, I feel like that sounds a lot more out there than it actually was. Because at the yeah. time, Newcastle was going to try and... Yeah, yeah, they were a good side. I think they got um, they were doing well in the European World Champions League. Uh, did they get to a semi final? Was it Newcastle that got to the semi final? We'll have to check. I'm sure they, they certainly got far anyway. Um, so that w wouldn't be that out there. They, they, Newcastle, are these clubs that don't win anything ever but still maintain this kind of massive club tag. Maybe not so much recently after a couple of relegations, but certainly at that time. He had a few good run-ins with the league title. Um, took United to the wire once or twice. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I, I actually remember that. Oh, yeah. When I was researching this exact thing, because I went out and did research on Newcastle at that time. and they Like we all do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nerd. Apologies. <laughs> but, no, I mean, they, they were a strong side at that time. So uh, it, it's it's not a crazy it was not a crazy ridiculous uh, <laughs> rumor at the time. I guess you look at it now though it's kind of the idea of him playing just seems kind of unheard of for them, you know. Yeah. Um, mm. Also, I thought this was kind of equally interesting. Uh, there was a rumor that Moyes was going to resign in protest if Rooney was sold. Mm. And um, once again that. Yeah, because at the time, nobody actually thought Rooney was going to leave. Even though he was so good, people were convinced he was staying. Um, so, yeah, I remember that as well. Um, yeah. I mean, he never. <laughs> <laughs> he stuck around for one or two more years, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, they were, what I read, they were offering him a contract extension that summer, that same summer. So, yeah. uh, so... Let's go to 2006, where uh, apparently the rumors lasted all, uh, for a good part of the summer that Everton were battling Man City and Newcastle for Spurs' Robbie Keane, and the rumored fee was $5 million. So, yeah. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Football inflation, eh? <laughs> yeah. That's Change the thing. The yeah. Uh, I mean, you think about uh, the fact that we bought... Umar Nias for thirteen million. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about a keen that was arguably in his prime as well. Now we're not talking about yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about LA Galaxy Robbie Keane here. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know what you're trying to say. Are you trying to say the Galaxy weren't good? Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was that was one that kind of caught my eye. Another one was uh, apparently uh, we were connected with uh, a young player from Borussia Mönchengladbach named Michael Bradley. Yeah, mm -hmm. American player, yeah. center center, center mid. He, uh, apparently he had played well in the Confederations Cup in South Africa. And uh, so, yeah, we were, we were in for him, apparently. And also we approached Villarreal, Villarreal uh, about getting Josie Altidore on loan in the same year. Um, that may Football have, magic legend there. <laughs> that was that's one of those guys who was solid in other leagues, but not this one. Mm. You know, uh, I know, I remember he was in the Dutch league. He was banging him in for fun, uh, yeah. and he's done well playing for Toronto. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, he's one, when uh, when he first, I think he came to Premier League play for a couple of teams. What is it, Hull and Sunderland, right? Sunderland, yeah, I remember particularly at Sunderland. I was always under the impression that if he was if he was to come to the Premier League, which he did, I thought he had you know the physical attributes to actually thrive. But yep. I just you know I Sunderland in particular, I just remember some of his performances were absolutely dreadful. He was, I think he was um, he was highlighted for the amount of. Um, Unexplainable misses that he had, you know, some some of the chances that he that he'd somehow squander. But it, yeah, he, I, that was a, a shock to me that he didn't really do well. He reminds me like of a Victor Anachibi type mm -hmm. character yeah. on the pitch. They're very similar. Except I would say another compliments. <laughs> I would say Big Vic's hold up play was much better. Because mm -hmm. if you watch Altador when he played for Sunderland, because I watched him a lot, because I thought he was gonna be good, you yeah. know? Uh Ball would be coming to him, and he'd brace, and center back would come through him and just yeah. win the ball every time. And I remember just getting so angry. And at first, I'm thinking, that's a foul. Why are they not calling this? He's getting fouled repeatedly. And then I realized, no, it's your job when you play up front to hold those guys off. Mm. You know, he was so bad at that. Um, yeah, and you can't play in Premier League if if you're like him and you're not – you're not as quick as some of these some of these other strikers, you know. You got to have one or the other, uh, and he didn't really. Um, oddly enough, uh, Altidore and Bradley both play for Toronto FC now in MLS, and they just won the league last year. So Sebastian Jovinko, what a player! Wow, that guy's amazing. I've always thought we should go after him. Where's he? I mean, he just is just chilling in MLS. I know. I, I don't know. That side of the world. Ah man, like this European I, culture I, that way. I do think the league is getting better, and I, I think it's yeah, more watchable definitely. now. But it's still yeah. not. I mean, if you go, if you literally watch a Premier League game and then an MLS game, you'll hate it. So give it time. After yeah. you give it a wide berth, watch a Premier League game. Give it a few days, maybe a week, then watch an MLS game. <laughs> I went to it um, in New York a couple of years ago. I went to the New York derby between Red Bulls and New York City. Wow! And I was thinking, whoa, this is going to be feisty. Um, because there is already quite, even though it's only a new rivalry, there is bad blood between the two, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. And they, pl they played the Yankees Stadium, so it was good oh. to take that. Yeah. I, I know. Yeah. But if, if for a tourist like myself, Jerry. Um, but we had there, yeah. And the Red Bulls beat New York City at home 7 0. Yeah. I remember that game. game. I remember that, yeah. 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 Oh, and Bradley and Ray Phillips. Was that the one that there was riot? Yeah. riots beforehand, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. no word of a lie, we were in those riots. We were like walking as it was all going off and we were we were just <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're out. I feel like we're on a Prairie Road here on Derby Day. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, uh, the the idea of them playing at Yankee Stadium I thought was amazing when they first came out with it. And yeah. I was, and you were right, digging that. I mean, honestly, that would be big for me, regardless. And I'm, yeah. and I'm just some, you know, I'm a, I'm an American guy. I've never been to Yankee yeah. Stadium, but, yeah, but yeah. when you watch the football and you see how tiny that field is when they have to do that, yeah. that pitch is so thin, and it's just a different game when you watch. I, I don't really like watching it like that. But if no. I had the opportunity to go to a derby there, Dave, yeah, I would love it. You're <laughs> right. It would be cool. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. To be fair, it was, it was when I am. It was the it was really good because the because you're still kind of in the MLS you still kind of have the the American culture there so they still do these big bucket of chicken wings and massive like cause light and Bud Light and all that and obviously we're going there and because you're sitting in the baseball kind of stadium seats you've got like a big table next to you you put your drink in there you've got your food here you're in like a, these comfy seats no. For us, we used to these plastic horrible things, but they legs are spread out. You're like arms <laughs> each side, like this. Was well, fantastic. Loved it. And they had the FA Cup final on where United beat Palace, was it? Yeah, they had that. On. I was talking about that the other day with my granddad. Yeah. That, that that would have been us, wouldn't it? That was the, that was the final where it should well, have been us. I remember being sick, thinking it, I, I'm going to miss the FA Cup final if we get there. So I was mm. almost glad we got beat, but um, I wasn't. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> the um. It was fantastic watching that beforehand and then going to sit down and watching the game and just stuffing our face. Yeah, I don't, I mean, know, if, sorry. I don't know if 
if any of the games that I've been to have comfy seats with, with yeah. chairs like that. It's like I've been to I've been to like Panthers games, Wake Forest games, but I've never had the it's like a stadium seating for a theater or something. I haven't yeah, had that, that before. That, that is yeah. the best way you could describe it. Oh, You've got crazy. little holders for your drinks. That's how I was at the <laughs> uh, So after that little stroll into MLS, uh, we are apparently in 2008, 2009, we were also linked with Rude Van Nistelrooy. <laughs> As if. I think, he, I think he was older at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, that, that I've always been a very big fan of the squad we had from that year. That was the year that we got to the FA Cup final, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it was and we, you know, we did we did have a decent side, but not quite to the caliber of a, of a Rude Van Nistelrooy. Yeah, yeah. And the, the problem was we we didn't even enjoy that side because all we did was moan about having no money, mm, so we just yeah. actually. Pay attention to what that we were actually quite good yeah. around that time and should have enjoyed a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even then, Van der Story was out of our reach. Yeah, what's funny is the majority of these that I'm mentioning now are that year. Like a lot of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of these rumors are from that same year. So I think it's funny that all, how, a lot of these how, connections how, are recognizable. How many yeah. of them are on a free? Um, the only one that's on a free that I can it would be the last one, but I'm holding that one off. Right, yeah. All right. Um, so uh, also uh, we were connected with a with a young player from uh, Saint Etienne named uh, Blaise Mutuidi. Oof. So. That's yeah, yeah. I was just watching that. Uh, there's a show on Netflix uh, about Juventus, like a docu series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it talks about how they just purchased, uh, just bought him, and I, I, and I was like, oh wow, this guy's great. And my wife and I were watching that. It's it's solid, by the way. I've never, I don't get to see those kind of shows often, and yeah. uh, so I was just thinking, like, gosh, that guy's good. And then I read that, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so here's one that the Mirror reported as being practically a done deal. Uh, it said that Everton had beaten off competition from a number of clubs for the services of uh, a Leeds kind of a wonder kid named Fabian Delft. Yeah, I remember that one. I remember it, it, it seemed a dumb deal that he was coming to Everton. Um, wait, did he go to... It was Aston Villa he went to instead? Yeah. Yeah, yeah see, Everton and Villa were just like this at the time. Mm. We, we, we were both always Cat. battling for fifth. Cat. Blows back and forth for European football, weren't it? In yeah. Years. So yeah, and obviously he got the he, he ended up going there, but it wasn't meant to be a done deal that he was coming to us. Uh, yeah, yeah, I I saw that and I was thinking, you know what? If he was here, or if he had come here, uh, he might still be here. You know what I mean? If you think about I mean, it, I think, because I think he'd certainly he'd certainly solve the left back dilemma. Mm-hmm. He's put in a few good solid performances at left back with one shitty. Yeah, he has. Is, oh. You wonder yeah. if one of our managers it, would have put him there, though. You know? Yeah, true. True. Uh, Highly unlikely. So, I think we saw true colours when he left for City. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not on beat video. Yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm it's a show that's still loyalty in football. And literally, that was <laughs> three days, was it? He, he, he left. <laughs> yeah. There was a thing that happened. Damn, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, so I've saved this last one for last. Um, we were apparently very close to getting a, a player on a free from Newcastle, bringing him back to Merseyside. Uh, Michael Owen. <laughs> apparently we were <laughs> connected with him in 2008 and 2009. Boyo Devatonian. Yeah. Hmm. As the, as a lot of them lot, their heroes are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are, yeah. So uh, th- that one did seem like it had legs. It seems like he had a few options on the table. Hmm. Uh, and Everton did seem one. I, I I can't remember why what how it petered out, obviously it did, but I can't remember. Um But yeah, it's probably best that we know. Oh, but because then he did sign. I think that was it. He, he was at Newcastle and then he was getting linked with Ever- Everton and a few other similar level clubs. And then he ended up going to United and everyone was like, "Yeah, I can't believe Ferguson's brought Michael Owen. What, what, yeah. 
how has this happened? And then he obviously I can't remember how many goals he scored, but he scored that massive winner in the uh, Manchester derby when they won four three. Um, but yeah, you know I forgot about that at the time. The outrage, everyone was thinking because uh, uh, people were like oh, Michael Owen. Uh, are we sure? You know, always injured, and then suddenly Man United was in for them, and everyone was like. Michael Owen, of course. What is the business by Ferguson, the master? Uh, but I was saying to the guy, I was saying to YouTube, wasn't I, off camera, that we were linked heavily with um, Aaron Ramsey as well. Between mm. us and Arsenal to get him. And um, for some reason, he chose Arsenal. <laughs> uh, I, I, luckily, it hasn't worked out for them off down there. Uh, mm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think that would have been a great sign. What year was I that? And when when he signed for Arsenal from, uh, from Cardiff. Yeah, it's got to be oh eight oh nine uh, maybe. Yeah. Wow, right. I didn't see that one in there. That is interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because even then, Everton still had not kind of name for playing youth uh, or yeah, giving youth a chance at least. So it was like you'll get more playing time at yeah. Everton as opposed to Arsenal. Uh, but as I said, for some crazy reason, he, he chose Arsenal. <laughs> mm. I think the the ones that um, kind of arose from when we got the Machiri investment kind of uh, they provided a few chuckles. I remember, you know, the like you know some of the names getting thrown about Axel Witzel, Juan yes. Mata. You've got you know you had fans going up to Ronald Koeman going in. Axel Witzel and Juan Mata are the happening, and he's going possibly for yeah. What, Draxler? Remember Draxler, Draxler was yeah. the one I was going to mention. Draxler. Yeah. I remember that. Jeez, that one. Even that one. oh come on, even this summer, Diego Costa. Yeah. Never happening, was it? Well, Diego Simeone. Remember him? Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> what's really funny is a lot of these. If you because I was keeping up because I'm the transfer nerd, looking at rumors and everything. Uh, I sort of think that Axel Witzel wanted what well, we had an agreement with him, and then he yeah. changed his. You know, I'm I'm one of those people who thinks that one was close. Mm, well, there's, there's loads of instances, and and they become particularly Evertonized if that can become a word. You know, we got that bad as a <laughs> the one from the one from Club Bruges where we we've we've, we've um, brought him in, announced that we've signed him, then he's failed his medical, so <laughs> we have to kind of make a statement saying, "Oops." And then when it, was that? Who was that? A ginger of foe. What year was that? Was that Moises last year? I think that oh, was no, around. Yeah. Well, I think my my favorite one, the Leroy Fair one that came out, and yeah. then the all the kind of the, the bizarre stories of his past sort of came out where he's he's bought his girlfriend a horse even though she lives in a flat, yeah. and, and all and all things like this, and he you know he he's event he eventually failed his medical and Everton and he's kind of found a path there with Swansea mm. again you kind of think because he did look like a strong player of Feyenoord you thought he's he, he, he kind of one of the what ifs for me mm. because yes granted he played for Swansea but he, I kind of look at him and think you know if he would have come into the Everton side and you know we could have integrated you into the start 11 you know we could have got like a great potential out of you but yeah. it wasn't to be yeah yeah, a lot of these, a lot of the ones that you guys mentioned, I actually think we were having conversation with them. I don't really, I didn't really have a whole lot of faith in Draxler. I didn't think that was no. really going to happen. No. Um, I didn't have any faith faith in the Timo Werner, Timo Werner, you know, from Leipzig. Mm -hmm. That that rumor yeah. you heard about. So we know there's a lot more of these weird transfer rumors out there. We know that we're purposefully holding some of these back. All right, because we want to be able to do this again. All right, we want to do more of these. Um, mm. So, because uh, I'm assuming there's just going to be tons of comments saying, hey, did you know we were, you know, linked yeah. with Ronaldo? Yeah. There's one obvious one. But tell, us, like, tell us about that time you saw Raquel May on County oh, Road. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> that one nailed on. So, guys, I guess that's it for uh, uh, outlandish transfer rumors from the past. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are... Uh, close to 500. We're really close. So we'd appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment. That'd be just sweet. Uh, check out uh, David's stuff on the Sportsman, but also on the Toffee Blues uh, website. Check out Max's stuff on the Toffee Blues website. Check out the Toffee Blues website. Lots of analysis there. Uh, check them out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. 
I think I'm done plugging. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it. Uh, I will, uh, I'll talk to you later. And yeah, thanks a lot for Max, yeah. for David, and for me. Bye.